introductions. We apologize, we're a bit delayed. We didn't want to compete with the jets outside. And a fun fact I've learned this morning that the F-35 that was flying yesterday, the pilot was a woman. And I'm really, that's really cool, but I'm looking forward to the day that it's not cool because it's rare, that it's, it's cool because it's a pilot in a fighter jet. So really looking forward to this day. Um, bonjour à tous, hello everyone. I'm really happy to be surrounded by so many talented and inspiring women in aviation today, not just on the panel, but also everywhere here in the room. And also the gentlemen who are joining us, you know, we need allies uh, to have more women in aviation. So thank you for being with us um, today. So if you were at Farnborough with us last year, you may have heard our panel. Uh, we had some of our women in aviation ambassadors last year and they gave us an update on where they were at. Today we have different ladies with us who will discuss their experience of being women in aviation, their goals to get more women into the industry and what they're doing to encourage change. So let's meet our panelists. We have Shannon Wittekamp. So Shannon joins us from Women in Aviation International, where she serves as a board member. Uh, she's the Chief Strategy and Innovation Officer for Unbridled Air LLC in Louisville, Kentucky, and co-owner of and CEO of Equos Flight Academy. I hope I pronounced all of that well. <laughs> Welcome. Welcome, Shannon. We have Rook Sandra Magdalena Mihai. She's the Vice President of Women in Corporate Aviation. She's also the founder of Train Aviation and a certified international aviation trainer who has been working in the airline industry for the last 33 years. Thank you for having me. So, welcome. We have Daniela Saucedo. I really practiced the pronunciation. I think I did it quite, quite well. <laughs> and uh, Daniela is one of our Sea Women in Flight Ambassador and she's the first officer for Aero Mexico. Daniela was one of the first recipients of the Sea Women in Flight Ambassador Scholarship, scholarship back in 2018. Uh, and by being an ambassador, Daniela wants to inspire more women and young girls to embrace a career in aviation. And finally, we have my colleague, Hannah Bells. Hannah is the Sea Women in Flight Program Manager and Marketing Communications Manager at CAE for our Civil Aviation Division. She's passionate about aviation and was identified as an emerging leader by Women in Aviation International, which included a sponsorship to attend a Women in Leadership course at Harvard University. Not too shabby. So welcome, everyone. So to get started, we're going to go back uh, in time a little bit. We're going to start with our first question. And I'd like to know, where did your passion for aviation start? Did you have any role models in aviation? In aviation? I mean, we can start with uh, Han. <laughs> um, thank you for having me here. My passion for aviation started, I'll, I'll make this fairly quick. It's, it's been a long story, but when I was 19, I wanted to be an air traffic controller. And the only way that I knew to do that was to join the military. So I enlisted in the Marine Corps. Uh, unfortunately, I did that in 1987, and before I got to ship out to boot camp, they had car, our Congress passed what they called the risk rule, and all women who could be exposed to combat positions uh, were denied entrance. So that eliminated most of the aviation positions. So I did not know another way to, I, I didn't know anyone who was an air traffic controller. And so I just kind of let that dream go by, and I came back into aviation about 15 years ago as a corporate flight attendant, and um, worked my way through, became very involved in cabin safety, then management, and now I'm CEO of flight school. So, thank you, Carrie, and yeah, Jenny. What about you, Daniela? Oh, uh, well, okay. I, since I was a little girl, I was in the aviation world. Uh, both of my friends were the cabin crew. Uh, I remember that I was in the middle of uh, exploring the whole point up and down with everyone was waiting. Um, I also remember myself putting uh, good bicycles to the passengers. Yeah, since then I worked for Air Mexico. <laughs> but yeah, because of my parents. My role model is my mother. Uh, being a flyer owner because my, my brother and I, but she was the one that pushed me, so it's great. 
amazing. So you can say you started your career at IO and you're quite young. Yes, <laughs> yes, of course. What were you, Sandra? I started my aviation career when I was uh, 18 years old um, as a flight attendant for the Romanian national carrier. But before that, uh, being a child, we used to have um, one of our family members, um, a lady who was a military pilot. And uh, I was growing up hearing stories about flying, and uh, at that time, 25 years ago, aviation was very adventurous. It was very, it was like an adventure and a freedom. Only the excitement of, uh, uh, of flying was something that uh, uh, nurtured you to your interest at that time. I was a flight attendant for 30 years, flying for promotion and then holiday, and since 2019. I am a um, vice president for women in public aviation. But I'm continuing my career um, teaching and training as a teacher of I have a company, a business aviation company in Romania, and I'm very happy that I can uh, give back to the community what the community was giving to me. I think, Tana, your story is really different. Yeah, so I've been a lot of pilots, I've not been a flight attendant, um, but I am a woman who works in aviation. My passion uh, came from, I can remember it so clearly, it was my first flight that I would really remember, going on a holiday with my family and seeing the crew, including the pilots there, and thinking, wow, what a life, you always get to go travel and be on holiday. And it, oh, I really knew, like, I've got my dream job. So that passion has translated to reality. Um, and I suppose for my role models, it really, I've had many in my life, uh, you know, people, personally, professionally, but generally a lot of them have been men who have encouraged me to do things that I probably wouldn't have ever thought about doing before. Yeah, and Jessica, you shared the statistic, only 5% of pilots are women. So there aren't any, well, there, there's some that there is any, there, there aren't many role models. Um, so, you know, a, a few of you have women associations, so what do you think are some of the ways that we can increase uh, the number of women, not just as, as pilots, but women in aviation in general. Encouraging them to pursue a career in aviation. Um, the WCA has a program with the um, Auburn University where we have uh, workshops and seminars for the young ladies that they want to pursue a career in aviation. And um, I can say that I advise any young lady who wants to become a pilot there because if you dare to do something, you are half there. I know that the pilot job is uh, achievable, but uh, behind this, it's a very hard work. Um, a lot of determination and perseverance, because it's not easy. And um, I advise them to um, get a training or get a scholarship in order to pursue their career, because uh, it's expensive as well to be a pilot, to become a pilot. So. All these programs that we have, Women in Aviation International, WCA, MBAA, we encourage women to become pilots or to pursue any other career in aviation because there are so many other um, jobs, not only for flight attendants or pilots, we have maintenance, we have engineers, we have dispatchers, or different jobs in aviation. And talking to the young generation about uh, aviation, I think we can, um, show them or to be role models for them and um, we have to encourage them to get in touch with uh, people that they are already in the aviation maybe some uh, uh, pilots very well-known pilots or uh, successful pilots lady pilots or men lady pilots but i think that nowadays it's very easy to get uh, into a male dominating industry so um, it's very easy or it's not easy? Uh, I think it's uh, it becomes easier. Yeah. Yeah.